You ever feel like your code is just a little wordy? Like you're typing the same stuff over and over again? Well, today we're gonna dive into some simple tricks that pro developers use to write code that's cleaner, shorter, and way more efficient. So just take a look at these two lines of code. On the left, we've got something we've all written a million times, x equals x plus one. It works, it's totally fine. But then look at the right, x plus equals one. Here's the thing, both of these lines do the exact same thing. They take the value of x and add one to it, but one of them is obviously a lot shorter. So what's the real difference? And more importantly, why should you even care? I mean, is it just about saving a couple of keystrokes, or is there something bigger going on here that can actually make you a better programmer? Well, the answer is something called shorthand operators. Honestly, the best way to think of them is like abbreviations or nicknames for the most common things you do with variables. Their goal is super simple, make your code shorter, and once you get the hang of them, way easier to read at a quick glance. Okay, so this is pretty much our entire basic toolkit right here. You've got plus equals for addition, minus equals for subtraction, and you can see the pattern, right? It's the same deal for multiplication, division, and even the modulo operator. Every single one is just a direct, shorter way to write the long version. You know, the best way to really wrap your head around this is to just see it in action. So let's follow a variable. Let's trace it through a few of these operations. We're gonna start with an integer, x, and we'll just give it a value of 10. First up, we're going to use the addition assignment operator. We say x plus equals 5. Now, that's just the short way of saying x equals x plus 5. So, of course, our variable x is now 15. Pretty simple, right? Okay, so let's take that new value, 15, and let's apply the next operator, x equals minus 3. This just subtracts 3 from whatever our current value is, which brings x down to 12. And let's keep it rolling. Next is x equals 2. This takes our current value of 12 and, you guessed it, multiplies it by 2. So the new value of x is now 24. See how we're just chaining these things together? It's pretty clean. And for our last step in this little journey, we'll use the division assignment x divided by 4. We take that 24, we divide it by 4, and we land on our final value, which is 6. And there it is. The final output is 6. But using these shorthand operators, we just did four different calculations in a way that was really clean and honestly pretty easy to follow. Okay, so those were the basics. But now let's get into the two shorthand operators that you are going to see and use constantly. I mean, all the time, especially when you start working with loops. Let's talk about increment and decrement. These guys are the ultimate shortcuts. The double plus, plus plus, it just means add one. It's literally the shortest possible way to write x equals x plus 1. And of course, the double minus, minus minus, does the exact opposite. It decreases a value by 1. Now this seems super simple, but here comes the twist. And it's a detail that trips up beginners and, let's be honest, even experienced programmers sometimes. When you use plus plus or minus minus, does the value change before the line of code is finished or after? Well, the answer actually depends on where you put the operator. And this right here is the crucial difference. If you put the plus plus before the variable, that's called prefix, and the rule is simple. Increment first, then use the new value. But if you put it after the variable, that's postfix, and the rule is the total opposite. Use the current value first, and then increment it. This timing, it's everything. All right, series great, but let's make this real with an example. We'll declare an integer i and set it to 5. Now, for our first line, we're going to print the prefixed version, plus plus i. So what do you think it's going to get printed? The output is 6. So why? Because with prefix, remember the rule. Increment first, then use. So the program increases i from 5 to 6 before the print function even gets a chance to look at it. Okay, so i is now 6. That's its current value. Let's run our next line, but this time we're using the postfix version, i++. What gets printed now? And this is just perfect. It shows the difference so clearly. The output is still 6. With postfix, the rule is use first, then increment. So the program grabs the current value of i, which is 6, and it sends that to be printed. After all that is done, kind of behind the scenes, i then gets updated to 7. So... We know that last operation bumped it up to seven, it just did it quietly. 
So to prove it, what happens if we just print the value of i one more time? No operators, just i. And there it is. The output is 7. This confirms that the postfix operation from the last line absolutely did its job. It just did it after the value was used. Getting this distinction down is absolutely critical for controlling how your programs flow. So where does all this theory actually get used? Well, the single most common place you are going to see the postfix increment operator is as the engine that drives a for loop. Take a look at this totally standard for loop. We start i at 0, we tell it to run as long as i is less than 5, and the key piece is that third part, i++. That postfix operator runs after the code inside the loop has finished its cycle. And this is exactly why postfix is so perfect for loops. On the first pass, we use the value 0, so it prints value 0. Then i gets incremented. On the second pass, we use the value 1, then it increments. And this just keeps going, all the way until i is 4. The loop runs, it prints value 4, and then i is incremented to 5. That finally makes the loop's condition false, and the whole thing stops. It's just a really clean, elegant system. Look, using shorthand operators is a fundamental step toward writing more professional code. It shows you're thinking about not just making things work, but making them concise and readable. So here's a final thought for you. If you can make this one small part of your code more elegant, where else in your projects can you find those opportunities to improve and to refine your work?